All right, what's up, everybody? Um, Future here, Assassin's Crew, Urban Artistry. This is going to be my first vlog in my series. Um, it's a topic that's really important to me. It's something that uh, a lot of people use this word and the language based around this word. Um, I think it's something that we can really think about as a community, uh, as a whole. Um, the word is boogaloo. And what I want to talk about boogaloo today is the many different types of boogaloo, right? So usually now, especially in the popping community, if you hear someone use the word boogaloo, um, they might say it like, oh, uh, you know, I do waves, but my main style is boogaloo. Um, or they'll say, yeah, I'm a boogaloo dancer, but I'm trying to branch out into strutting and tutting and whatever else it may be. Now, when we use that word in such a broad term, it's, most poppers will know what you mean. You mean the electric boogaloo style, which is an amazing style. Highly recommend uh, learning it because it adds so much to your, your arsenal as a dancer. And it's a dope style. Um that uh that can really help with swinging and hits and and like extended movement and body rolls it's dope um, but what we have to be aware of is that we should also be respectful to some of the elders from the oakland boogaloo community as well as the other boogaloo communities that are out there that i'll talk about in a little bit so if i say i'm a boogaloo dancer i shouldn't just mean oh you should just know i'm this type of boogaloo dancer you should specify, you should say, oh, I'm doing Oakland Boogaloo, or oh, I'm doing um, Electric Boogaloo here, or, you know, this is some Latin Boogaloo music, or this is Soul Boogaloo music from the 60s, or this is um, Boogaloo music from the, the 30s. So there's so many different types of Boogaloo. So, you know, in order to be respectful of some of the elders and the people that paved the way for this tradition of pop and Boogaloo that we know today, um, we have to also just specify what type of boogaloo we're talking about and be aware that there is other types. So, right, there's, there's not just electric boogaloo, there's Oakland boogaloo. And boogaloo for those guys in Oakland is a little different depending on which group you talk about. Um, the resurgence, they had certain things that they incorporated into the style, that was boogaloo for them. Um, the messengers added a lot of new elements hits and swoops and that was boogaloo according to them jerry renty and one plus one they also had their own definition of what boogaloo was they were mixing some ray harry hawson some of the dino rama as well as james brown movements and cha-cha steps and different characters from disney movies and cartoons and that's what boogaloo was for them so even before oakland and all the perspectives of what boogaloo was for them there was um, boogaloo piano players from the south, right? Um, the music was like, uh, sort of like ragtime music or like, um, there was people like Boogaloo Ames and, and Boogaloo different, this guy, Boogaloo that guy, and they were boogie woogie piano players. And it was music that would like hype up the juke joints and like really get the party going. You knew when, a, when one of the Boogaloo piano players was there, people were gonna dance people were going to express and have a good time. Um, so then there's that boogaloo. There's also Latin boogaloo um, from New York, which uh, has a, a deep history, um, uh, different Latin folks, Puerto Ricans, uh, creating this, this music and dance, as well as it being inspired by some of the African-American community and soul music, um, and that blending all together and creating what we know as Latin Boogaloo. Uh, if you want to know more about that, there's a docu uh, documentary out there called uh, The Way We Like It. Oh no, We Like It Like That. It's a really good one, talks about Latin Boogaloo. Um, but, so the word Boogaloo, um, it's rooted in the Congo, right? It's, it's an African word of, of origin. And as the slave trade happened and it went through the South, the African American South, the word is birthed in these African-American communities and you see it in the Southern music. Um, and then when the Great Migration happened, branched out to Oakland and different places across the states and the, the language just stayed in the community. So people were using it for what it always was known for even in the beginning, which was just to express oneself freely or to express oneself rhythmically or 
to dance devilishly, you know, devilishly good, like these types of terms. That's what boogaloo, um, in its origins, that's the spirit of the word. So it branches out Oakland boogaloo, and there's electric boogaloo, and there's Latin boogaloo, and there's southern dances and southern music, you know. Then there's soul boogaloo from the 60s with James Brown and these types of things. And there's just a lot, right? So there's different types of boogaloo. And then there's just the essence of the word. So that also is tweaked per the community. Um, but per Oakland um, and my research, the word, when I've asked most people and what I've seen in how they uh, dance and, and the way it looks is, and their stories is that boogaloo is just nothing but freedom dancing. It's a dance about freedom of expression, about putting all the things together that you like, that you're inspired by, and doing boogaloo your way, expressing yourself your way, right? In Oakland at this time, in the mid-60s, when these dances are being created, boogaloo was the dance of Oakland. That's just the way people danced in Oakland. That was their city's dance. It wasn't the same like today where we can get inspired by Memphis Jookin and by flexing and by all these things. They didn't see all those things, so all they knew was boogaloo, and it was whatever they were inspired by. The movies, the cartoons, the Motown singers, Ray Harryhausen footage... Um, different things in Disney movies, and James Brown, Chuck Berry, uh, the Nicholas Brothers, Bojangles, all these types of things were allowed and put into the dance, and that's what Boogaloo was for them. And each group just did a little bit different. But really, we're also talking about African American communities during a time of, of civil rights, of a time when uh, when people were being... It was just unjust. There was inequality. Um, and not to say that doesn't exist today for African Americans, but at this time it was heavy and there was people fighting for it. So Boogaloo in its essence is something from that culture. It's a freedom dance. Boogaloo is a freedom dance. And it is basically about expressing yourself freely and feeling good about yourself and uplifting your community and uplifting your people. That's really, in essence, what Boogaloo is. So when you say, oh, I'm Boogaloo this guy, or I'm Boogaloo that guy, and you put your name with the word Boogaloo, it's important to remember that your dance and your art should be a representation of freedom. And I think that's just something really important that we forget. We use the word Boogaloo, and we just mean electric Boogaloo movement, which, again, is amazing. But let's be clear. Let's be educators Let's, uh, let's use it in a way so people have some depth and understand the different forms of boogaloo um, and the word as well, like what it just means in general, the spirit of boogaloo, the essence and this freedom uh, of letting go and expressing oneself. Um, even in Oakland, they used it as a term to mean almost sensei. So if you put boogaloo before your name, you're one of the baddest boogaloos out. You're one of the best dancers in Oakland, you know. So boogaloo Vic would be like Sensei Vic. So that that's another way to think about it. It's like you were one of the best dancers in the city. You had to earn the term Boogaloo because you were a, a representation of the culture at that point. So that was a big, important thing for them. And I think it's just important for like, especially with African-American history, to talk about these different approaches and different perspectives and to recognize the lineage, right? We're talking about African-American traditional dances. That's what Boogaloo and Popping is, no doubt about it. And it traces from wherever it is now, everywhere, back to Oakland, to L.A., to New York, right and all of the places popping was all of that history traces back to the south the african-american south through blues rock and roll you know field songs like gospel music this is really where boogaloo is stemming from it's really the south and uh i think we have to recognize those traditions and not say that the boogaloo we know is the only one so i say that just so people can Think about that, you know, think about that when you say, oh, I'm a boogaloo dancer. Think about all of what that means and how if you're talking to someone that knows multiple forms of boogaloo about different ones, how you might want to clarify which one you're talking about or else they're just kind of up in the air like, what do you mean boogaloo? Like, what do you mean? There's so many different types. Um, so 
I think um, the last thing I want to mention about Boogaloo and popping is just historically it's been what it is throughout the different years per the different communities but we also in 2018 we get to decide um, what it is for us what is Boogaloo today what is popping today um, and what customs do we allow in the culture today? What things don't we allow? Um, what is the culture of today and how do we use popping a boogaloo to also uh, represent who we are as a culture? You know, we have to add our own chapter of what popping and boogaloo is because that's what every group has been doing since the beginning <laughs> of boogaloo, of the word. Everybody's just added their own form of freedom expression as an artist. So I think what I want to open up the floor for you guys is like, let me know what you guys think. What is Boogaloo in 2018? What is popping in 2018? You know, like, and I don't say that to dismiss anything that came before. It's all about balance. Knowing where you came from and adding your own chapter into the book. That's really what, what it's all about, you know. But as we define what it is for us today and the new things we're really into... Let's also remember the essence and where it comes from and the initial purpose of being a boogaloo, you know, and, and all of those different types of boogaloos because all those stories are important. If we forget that, then we're just headed off in a no man's land and we don't really know where we're going. Um, so it's about knowing tradition and innovating and passing everything forward to the next generation. So... I just wanted to throw that out there. This is my first vlog. I'm going to do some, some more, but I think this topic of what is Boogaloo, what has it been, and what will it be are some good questions to start with. So uh, please comment and let me know like what you guys think about wh what I've said. I'm no master expert on these things. I'm still learning about it and talking to different people all the time, doing my research. I'm reading a book called Boogaloo right now. Uh, that I'll put in the link where you can check that out as well. Um, but it's really interesting, you know, when you start learning more about Boogaloo, you start to see how the language, the way we use the language, and we speak about it in the popping community, it starts to seem kind of strange. And you start to say like, oh, okay, maybe we should think about this in a new way. So that's my, uh, my thought that I want to put out in the popping world now and uh, let you guys run with it. So look forward to discussing more with you all. And uh, talk soon. Again, future urban artistry, assassins crew. Peace.